First of all, we want to say good morning, good morning. to everybody. And uh, we thank God for another day's journey. Yes, sir. Good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time for not only the, for the Sunday school is in order at this here particular point in time, but we also just glad to be back in the house of the Lord, period. Yes. In other words, the day we know of our, our pastor's anniversary, mm -hmm. we thank God for Pastor Ham. And, we uh, want to make sure we honor him, and as always, uh, as our leader and servant of the Most High God. So we want to go ahead on and we want to go and get started this morning because we're we going to be trying to pour a, a, a paint, or as I should say, a quarter into a paint this morning. So what the days are the normal lesson and the day's date? All right, and then we got, we in unit three that says Holy Days. Mm -hmm. And the topic? A clean, uh, a clean slate. Clean slate, all right. Devotional reading? Uh, Hebrews, the third chapter, the first to the sixth verse. All right, and we got background scripture? Leviticus chapter 16, uh, chapter 23, chapter 26 through 32, number. All right, good. Okay, so now we got the print passage. Okay, Leviticus 16, 11 through 19. All right, we got the key verse. Will somebody read the key verse for us, please? Okay. All right. <laughs> uh huh. He shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression in, their, in all their sin. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. All right. Thank you, that, brother. Deacon Shane was all. Now we got some key terms here. Uh, will somebody pronounce those terms and give us the little meaning that they got for them? Okay, key term, atonement. Uh, first there, Hebrew, mm -hmm. kapha, mm -hmm. to cover, purge, make an atonement, make, uh, make reconciliation. Okay. Con, uh, sensor, mm -hmm. verse 12, Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Malta. Ma Malta. Mm -hmm. It stands for live coal. Mm -hmm. Incense. Ketoris. 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 Sweet smell and spice burn as an offering in work. All right. Thank you, that brother. You can change it. I will say brother in a minute. Right. But okay. So now what we got here today, <clears throat> we want to, the lesson aims, it says that as a result of experiencing this lesson, the students should be able to do these things. Explore the Day of Atonement detailed in the book of Leviticus. And then they should be able to reflect on the meaning of atonement, of their sins and its relevance today. And then also to identify those areas in their lives where repentance is needed and to seek atonement. All right, somebody read the introduction. I'm going to set it up. Introduction. There are so many who walk around with regret. They wear it like a badge of honor or a heavy backpack. The weight, the load is so heavy that we cannot perform effectively in our God-given role, whether it is on the job, at home, or in the church. Often, these regrets are due to our guilt and shame for wrong we have done to others. Why? Society does not have, <clears throat> have a system in place to wipe away wrong deeds. There is one in place to help when it comes to financial hardship. The bankruptcy reports are designed to help those who have gotten in over their head in debt, normally due to a loss of a job, mm -hmm. a medical emergency, mm -hmm. or a death in the immediate family. Mm -hmm. These courts help people to either create a manageable system for Repayment or to leave the court with a clean slate, a fresh start. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we do not want to end up in 
in a situation whereby we need to have a court appointment. Mm -hmm. The laws were established because the need may arise. In our lives, they would be the rise, many of which we cannot manage on our own. God has given us a way to escape our mess through his son, Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. 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 Now, I want y'all to... I want y'all to put on your seatbelt this morning because we're going to take this thing for a ride. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have some crooked turns in it. And matter of fact, there are some things that are going to be said that a lot of us are not going to want to admit, but nevertheless, it's true. Mm -hmm. In other words, as uh, Deacon Shingle just read here in, this, in the introduction, we're going to see here where we carry a lot of excess baggage. Mm -hmm. In other words, that this excess baggage sometimes, or most of the time, causes us not to be able to do the thing that we need to be done. In other words, God is a God of, he's a God of uh, order. God is a God of order, and he does things on a timely manner. All right. In other words, we often say, people say, well, God is an on-time God. Mm -hmm. Well, God can only be on time because he knows the end from the beginning. My Lord. So he can't help but be on time. Yeah. In other words, God is a God that knows when to move, how to move. Yeah. And he don't need, if you don't move with the cloud, you're going to mess up your own self. Uh -huh. This is what we often do as we see here. We had a reference here to the bankruptcy court that's in play for people that have gotten themselves in a financial predicament. Yes. In other words, now y'all, how would, how, wouldn't y'all agree that most of the time we are in these messes because of what we done ourselves? <laughs> Amen. Amen. We don't know when to stop spending. Yeah. In other words, what we used to call the cookie jar mm. financial system. In other words, if I had money in the cookie jar, I spent. When the cookie jar ran out, I stopped spending. <laughs> but see now, we got these things called credit cards. Yeah. Now, I ain't against nobody having a credit card. Because mm -hmm. a credit card can't be a lifesaver yeah. if used correctly. Mm -hmm. In other words, they tell me that a credit card should be used as a, like a blank check. Mm -hmm. It should be used as a check. Meaning that whatever you put on that card on a given month, pay it off at the end of the month. Yeah. Because that interest is going to kill you. If you don't. So now we see that that's the bankruptcy system that we got. And I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of people have abused that system. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, you know, we say we love to be like God, right? We say that. We want to be like God. I'm going to turn this thing this way. We, we, we say we want to be like God. Don't we say that? But now, would you think that it would be God-like? For you to go out and create debt that you already know that you ain't going to pay just to go to the bankruptcy court. Is that being like God? No. No. No, no it's not. And in the day we're going to see that this extra baggage that we carry sometimes is stuff that wrongdoing that we have committed to others that's, that's weighing on our shoulder that we need to let go. Because once God forgives you, you forgive him. He never looks back anymore. He said, as far as the east is from the west. In other words, he don't remember it no more. In other words, I can't judge it because I don't remember it no more. This is what God said. So let us go. I want, we're going to go ahead on and get through with the verses. Like I said, we're going to take this thing in a different turn this morning. Because we got a lot that we want to make a reference to about how Jesus is the fulfillment of this, what we call atonement. So let's start with our verses, reading at, uh, I guess that would be verse 11. So somebody read verse 11 through 14, and then we'll get another reader if we can, if you want to, to read 15 through 16, and we'll go by it that way. Verse 11, King James Version. And Aaron, said, and Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself. And for his house, and shall kill the bullock or the sin of the which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals applied from off the altar before the Lord, and his hand full of sweet incense, beat it small, and bring it within the veil. 
and he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud or, or the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he died not. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. All right, seven times. Seven times. The number completion. Seven times. All right, so now, as we see here from the price of atonement, we see, now we got a, we got a little outline there, so I'm going to let you go ahead on and read that little outline that goes with it. Anybody? You can do it too if you want, Brother Lewis. That, uh, the, 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 the outline for the price of atonement. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's right up under the LFT plate, the atonement cover. Seven times. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, the atonement cover. Oh. Mm -hmm. Seven times. Said Moses, Moses brother. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What you call that? Chief? That's the, the outline. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So Moses' brother Aaron mm -hmm. considered the high priest at that time was to bring a bull full of his own personal sin offering and for his entire house. You see here, you see here the price of the offering not only in the killing of the bull, a more expensive and dangerous animal, as opposed to a lamb more fragile and docile, but also in the extensive detail of how Aaron was to kill and offer the bull unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was to get a sister full of coal, mm -hmm. two hands full of finely ground incense, signifying the best. That's right. And go behind the curtain veil, and then place them on the altar behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. The smoke will rise up and cover the tablet contain the law and fill the air. Mm -hmm. This covering will keep him from a deserving death himself. Mm -hmm. The priestly bull was offered before any other offering to purge the contamination of sin caused by the priesthood. Mm -hmm. Yes, the leader caused it caused sin in the nation. He then had the charge to take the blood and specifically and sprinkle Sprinkling it as the Lord had instructed him. Mm -hmm. He was to finalize the process by doing it seven times before the atonement covered, signifying the completion of completeness mm -hmm. of the covering. Mm -hmm. On this day, in the midst of the cloud of smoke, the high priest, Aaron at this time, was to perform a blood ritual in the Holy of Holies, sprinkle blood on, the, on and in front of the ark. Or the cover seven times. The mercy seat is the cover or lid for the ark or the cover. My all Lord, right. Okay. All right, y'all. Now come on. We got to get with this thing. Now you see, you see that number seven mentioned here many times. Yeah. Seven being the number of completion. Mm -hmm. But now I want you to notice here Moses, which was Aaron's brother. Moses was God's man. Right. Yes, Moses right. was God's man. Right. Now, we, we, I think a few, not too long ago, we had a, we had a saying, and it's, excuse me that deep, but I'm going to have to turn back and talk right. to you too. But we, we, we had a saying that they had a bold me. Yes, yes. The children of Israel. All right. They had a bold me. They, Miriam, Moses' sister, Miriam got to the place where she said, well, if God talked to Moses only, mm -hmm. oh. Aaron, then he talked to us too. We profited. Mm -hmm. right. Think Moses taking too much on himself. Uh oh. Then she was stricken with leprosy oh. and was put outside the camp seven days. Mm -hmm. Moses pleaded for her. That's his sister. Oh my God, don't put her, don't, don't, don't destroy her. God said, yeah, I'm not going to destroy her, but I'm going to put her out this camp. I'm going to let her stay out there for seven days where she can learn some respect. Oh, that's what, that's what it was. See, you got to learn some respect. So you see, by her talking against Moses, hey, Moses uh, God told Moses, have proud me. 
Bring them to the tent of me. He brought all of them before the tent. He said, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you who I'm with. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to show you who I'm with. And then all of those that spoke against Aaron and Moses' ministry, the earth opened up, swallowed them. Every one of them, thousands, thousands. Talking about God's man. Talking about what God had told us to do. So in other words, now we see here that order is involved in everything we do. Have you noticed in the church? I'm just gonna, we're gonna, see, we can always talk about us. The church. It don't matter how we do this. It don't matter how we do that. It does matter. Look at this. He said the high priest, Aaron was the high priest at that time. He was to bring a bull for his own personal sin. See that? You know what? Not just the leader. This the priest. But he had sin. How many of us, because we go to church, we think we God give to the God got a blessing by just me being on his side. Huh? The priest had to offer his own personal sin offering and for his entire house. Yeah. For his household. See, in other words, D, he didn't tell you to look at my house, so he told me to get yours. Yeah. In other words, how many of us trying to tend to more business than we can handle? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you see, the price of the offering, not only for the killing was a bull. The bull was more expensive. And also a bull is more dangerous. A bull will, get, a bull will make you move. <laughs> Amen. So, so he had to do that for himself and for his household as well as all the rest of the priests. The Levites and all of them, they had to come clean. You don't go for God any kind of way. So in other words, now this was the act this was the first part of the act of atonement. It's fair. Get your own self straight. Before you try to straighten up the whole church, you get straight. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's what we must do. So now do you, we see here that the way it was supposed to be done, it was supposed to be done decent. And it was supposed to be done in order. This is how God still wants us to perform. I'll do this as leaders as well as lay people. Everybody need to know their lane and stay in it. That, amen? amen? You need to know your lane and stay in it. Okay, this is where it was supposed to go. He was to take, not only he was killed the bull, but as you notice, the bull wasn't taken behind the veil. Only the blood. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They bear witness in heaven. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. The water, the blood, and guess what? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is operating in both realms, ain't it? Okay, I want y'all to remember that. The Holy Spirit operates in both realms. Heavenly and on earth. In other words, stop doing stuff without the, the leaders and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God means for everything to be done decent and order. Then he will take the he would take the censer. This was a, like a metal plate that held the incense. See, you know what? It wasn't. It wasn't. The, the, when it, it's called a censer that make everybody think that this was the incense. But no, this is what held the incense. And they was. It was taken. The coals of fire was taken off the altar that burnt the sacrifice that was put in the censer. Then the priest would crush. The incense, two handfuls, put it inside the censer. And then he would take this as well as the blood mm -hmm. behind the veil. And when he put that incense in that censer, the fire got next to it, <sighs> big smoke, yes, covered that mercy seat. Now I know y'all have seen, y'all have seen the art, uh, what they call, Raiders of the Lost Art. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. when you saw that the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see those cherubim wings go from end to end over the mercy seat. Yeah. This is that smoke that covered. This is what the smoke from the incense covered up was the mercy seat. Because the mercy seat set on the Ark of the Covenant. What was inside that Ark? What was inside of it? Y'all remember? Uh, it, go ahead. What was inside of the Ark of the Covenant? Well, actually, it was the tablets of stone. The tablets of stone that Moses received on Mount Sinai. Also, it was something else in that Ark of the Covenant. It was a bowl full of manna. Y'all remember that? The manna? What was the manna? What was the manna? The food that he served. Bread from heaven. That rained down every morning. Okay, oh, it was another thing in that that art. Mo Aaron's rod that budded. See, this is where the dispute came from about who was supposed to have the priesthood. In other words, you had other people thought it was supposed to be me. How many of us like that? <laughs> hmm? My Lord, my Lord. It, it, that should have been me. All right. But now, when that smoke covered that mercy seat, in other words, those laws that was in there, guess what, y'all? None of us could keep them laws. See, this is the beauty about it. No one could keep it. The priest, he would put dip on the mercy seat the blood with his finger. Seven times, noting completion. But not only that he did for himself, that was the bull. But as we're going to see later on, he had to go back out and get the gold. That was for me and you and us. He had to do the same thing, then he had to go back. So we see something here. These priests were very busy. They were very busy. And if they went inside that veil at, in the face of God, where the Shekinah glory was unworthy, they fall dead. What if the Lord in the world and we start falling dead today? How many dead folks be in the church today? Oh, oh, oh. Whoa! I mean, that's the truth, y'all. Because we could not keep this law. This is how come that the blood had to be done and sprinkled once every year. The priest was busy. Why? Because this blood only what? Covered. It just temporarily covered the sins of the people. I had to go back and do it again. This is why I come we so glad about our other brother Jesus. Amen. See, this, this, this is real atonement. In other words, what we say here, in a, if you look back at the key word, look at atonement. Atonement said to purge or to cover. Make reconciliation. Jesus did that once and for all. But the one thing that Jesus did that was different from the priest, he did it once and he didn't cover it. He took it away. Took it away. So in other words, now we have a more excellent sacrifice. The priest no longer got to go behind the veil anymore. Now as y'all notice right now, there's no temple in Jerusalem. There's no temple. But they're trying to build one. And mark my word, there will be another temple built. Yes. Know why? They want to go back to something that God has got through with. How many of us in the church always talking about, Lord, I wish it were like old time. <laughs> Don't want to move with the cloud. Y'all hear me say that a lot of times about moving with the cloud. That's the reason I say that. Moving with the cloud is what the children of Israel did when they was out in the wilderness. Everywhere the Ark of the Covenant, when they set up the tabernacle, the Shekinah glory of God was by a pillar of cloud by the day, pillar of fire by night. Every one of the Israelites could look out of their tent and look toward that tabernacle. They knew God was with them by seeing what they saw. But when that cloud moved, it didn't make no difference. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. They got to go. Every one of them got up and unfitted their tent, packed up and moved with that cloud. Wherever the cloud went, that's where they went. And when the cloud remained, they pitched camp. How, how great would our church service 
and our church home be today if we learn to do that, to move with the cloud. Move with the Holy Spirit. So we see now that there's order in doing things and make and make certain leaders that you right. Now you can't tell somebody how to do right and you ain't doing right. Because these kids, they're going to let you know. You can't tell me nothing. I'm looking at you. Jesus was our example. We're supposed to be their example. You know what? You don't have to tell nobody that you're a Christian. They should be able to see it. If you got to tell them, you want you eat too much, I'm not. Amen. Amen. So now we see now the mercy seat was the lid that covered those Ten Commandments. Why? Because see, if you notice something, if y'all notice our nation right now, you got a lot of people talking doom and gloom about well, you know this here, you know God, but if God don't judge America, he got to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what? Next time somebody tell you that, say I'm going with that. I don't even want to hear it. God ain't got to apologize to nobody. Right on, right on, man. God ain't got to apologize. In other words, when, what? Oh yeah, we doing some crazy stuff. But you know what? Every time we do some crazy stuff, like your chief justice did about these same-sex marriages, you know what God did? He looked at the mercy seat. Yes, he ain't so quick to judge us. If he was so quick to judge us, why did Jesus die? I don't, I don't. Think about it. Jesus said, I didn't come for the righteous. I came for sinners. Amen. This is why God, he talked so hard against those Pharisees. Good morning, Sister Simmons. He was so hard against those Pharisees. Why? Because they were so self-righteous. I'm, I'm, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. I'm not like this sinner. I'm so glad I'm not like this sinner. Every one of us were sinners. And you are saved by grace. What is that grace? Jesus himself. It is what, see, this is how come I don't dig people talking about themselves. Uplifting themselves. Mm -hmm. Talking about what my cousin did. Yes. What my nephew done. Wait a minute. It's what Jesus did. All right, all right, all right. You ain't done nothing. <laughs> In other words, Jesus paid the right. debt that atonement, the final one, was on Calvary. Amen. And the last time I checked, he said, it is finished. Amen. So that means, so simple, me and you can't add nothing to it. Amen. And we sure can't take nothing away from it. So when you see, her, well, you know, she ain't nothing but a, but a little prostitute. Well, look back in Jesus Christ's lineage. I think Rahab started. Yeah. Last I checked, Rahab was a harlot. And if you look at Ruth, the Moabites, a pagan, devil worshiping, whatever. But look at Ruth, the great grandmama of that King David, that's also in Jesus Christ's lineage. Come on, y'all. God can you, if God can you, a jackass. And talk through the mouth. He can do us. Amen. 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 So before we go in that past judgment, you know why? That's why a lot of people don't come in here on Sunday morning. Right on. Right on. Right on. People don't want you to tell them their sin. They already know their sin. Somebody told me, asked a question, and I said, you know, I heard a person tell me I'm not a Christian. I said, I can deal with that person. Mm -hmm. They just told the truth. I am not a Christian. You can deal with that better than a hypocrite, can't you? One that say they are one and not. <laughs> Pretend. So as you see here, there was order done. It was a way to do it. Don't go and throw God together nothing. Being cute. Do it the way he said do it. Amen. 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 Somebody else want to add anything to this before we move on? We'll go to. Uh, moderator, 
Yes, sir. Back in the Old Testament, they were killing animals to all this blood. Mm-hmm. And I was finding out in the New Testament that Jesus died, as you said, so ago. Died for us, and you know, shed his blood for us, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Amen. Back in the end, they were just shedding animals. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. In other words, the Old Testament is the New Testament. Mm-hmm. In other words, concealed. Mm-hmm. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. See, in other words, you got a lot of people always trying to think God was through with those. No, he wasn't God. Who do you think that gave the commandments in the first place? Yes. It was the word that came down. You remember, and I'm going to do this before I move on. Do y'all remember when they brought the woman that was caught in the very act of a daughter? It wasn't no doubt that she was guilty. But God, Jesus was looking at some things. With no man now. They didn't bring the man. You I ain't never seen nobody commit a dirty by themselves. There you go. But what did Jesus do? Before he he stooped down, got his what? Finger. And rolled. And if you notice, you go to Jerusalem, when you're writing on the ground, you're writing on stone. Remember, it was that same finger that rolled on stone at Mount Sinai. So he was letting them know, uh-uh. He said, you, without sin, cast the first stone. Well, here I go with my rock. Well, I thought about, well, I was with the woman last week. So I can stone. So I had to drop my rock and go. The women people that were there, they were jealous. <laughs> you can't be a harlot. You can't be a harlot unless you look pretty good. <laughs> Thank you not. Don't nobody want nobody to look like a bag of granny goose potato chips. <laughs> that, that'd be for real. So you see, Jesus was showing that, look here, I don't desire sacrifice, but mercy. Jesus came to seek and to save those of us that were lost. And that was every one of us. The Pharisees thought that they had it worked out. But you know what Jesus told them. He said, you of your father the devil. Y'all ever heard this? Young people talk about we all children of God. That's a lie. That's a lie. We all creation of God. But we are not all children of God. Because if it had been so, Jesus wouldn't have said it. Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, and the works of him you will do. So when you see people, don't fault me and Sister Simon for what we do. Fault that devil that's behind. When you see us cutting the food, the devil done got in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I mean, don't be surprised, y'all. Devil get in anybody if you are alive. But thank God for what? The atonement and the redemption of Christ. Now I ain't got to do it. But you remember that one I told you, we got in common in heaven and in earth. That's the one we need, the Holy Ghost. That's the one. That's the one. Let us move on, y'all, because time is slipping away from us. Yes, go ahead. Yes. I hear people come to me say, something told me. I thought it was the Son, that was the Holy Spirit. Tell people, if you ride down the road, and some said, don't go away. That's the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, something that you know. Amen, sister. You know, there you go. I'm glad the sister brought that out. You know what? I call that something. I call that the Holy Spirit nickname. Something. Because people don't know who, they don't know who's speaking to them. The Holy Spirit is consistently talking to us every day. I know. Before you even think about something, he's already telling you how to do it. Now, you know, you shouldn't have cussed that woman out. Yeah. That's that little, still, small voice. When you want to do wrong, 
but you end up doing right. Y'all just might as well come on down. We, we all, the last thing you want to do is bless somebody to curse you. You know better than that. Now you want to you want to do something to them, but it ain't blessed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You might as well just be for real about the thing. But it's the Holy Spirit that guides us and leads us into what? All truth. It ain't us, but it's him Amen. that's doing it through us. In other words, if you get anything from me, my hand's got to give it to you. But guess who got no hand? There you go. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to add anything up before we move on to verse 15? We got verse 15 and 16. And then we'll read 17 and 18. We're going to go and get all four of those verses right now. The place of atonement. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. um, verse 15 Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering That is for the people And bring his blood within the veil And do with that blood As he did with the blood of the bullock And sprinkle it upon the mercy seat And before the mercy seat And he shall make an atonement For the holy place Because of the uncleanliness Of the children of Israel and because of their transgression in all their sin, and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaining among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. Amen. Amen. Now you see, that that a goat. That's for us now. The priest done took care of himself. Mm -hmm. Now he got to take care of. All right. All right. But as you see something else that's going on here, not only. For us. But he had to what? Clean the building. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because what? You ever heard this saying that the, the trash is no better than the can that holds it? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. When you go, you know, we got people now. They talk about, you know, I can't go over there at that church. They do this and they do that. Their people over there just ain't right. Well, we looking for some perfection but you know what y'all if we find a tabernacle I know. that's perfect uh -huh. anywhere on the ground when we get there they're gonna make it mess it up <laughs> All right, think about it think about it because there are no perfect people Amen. nobody perfect so when you if, if, if Deacon, Deacon Shingle down get mad with Deacon Tim over there and decide he's going to leave Pine Grove mm -hmm. and, 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 and let's just say go over there to Antioch, mm -hmm. well, guess what? He's going to meet some same Deacon Tim's over there at Antioch. <laughs> See? Same people. Same attitude. And then again, I'm going to tell you something else what you might do. You might be some worse. Work out your own soul salvation. Mm. With fear, what trip, fear and trembling. In other words, work it out here. Yes, sir. At Pine Grove. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, he said, come together. Y'all should be able to come together. Yes, you shouldn't have to come over there to any y'all can get me. Amen. I ain't nothing. Nice. I'm gonna come out here and bring my confusion. Mm -hmm. But y'all ought to be able to get together. It said on the day of Pentecost, what did they do? They were what? Oh, oh, oh. One accord. One accord. Do y'all? Okay. Other than me, who else in here knows something about music? I know Sister Simon knows something about music. Anybody else know something about music? Well, in music, we got something called a chord. C H O R D. Chord. But if you look at it, a chord. Being together. Mm -hmm. If you play a C chord, so simple, mm -hmm. she got to play a C, or E, and a G. That makes a C chord. Right. When played together, it sounds so good. One chord. Mm -hmm. But now, if you go there and put anything else with that beside that, you got a mess. Good. It ain't going to sound good. So when y'all come in here for both me, D, 
Y'all have deacon bowl meeting as well. When you come for deacon bowl meeting, let me tell y'all something. Y'all are the leaders of Pine Grove Church. If y'all could come in here and be on one accord, there are a lot of things y'all could take care of. We'll never have to go to conference. We'll never have to go to conference. Because what? When your people see you and you getting along, they know they can trust whatever you decide in y'all make. But they see y'all cutting the food now, let's bring this to conference. Now I see when you get to conference, everybody that ain't been to conference in 10 years. <laughs> Here they come. Here they come. Amen. And some of them ain't paid no time. But they're going to want to have more to say than anybody. Amen. I got news for y'all. The place of atonement. If you are not doing your responsibility, I'm going to say this to you. A lot of people don't want to hear this. I've been a member of that church for 45 years. Yeah, but you ain't paid the money, though. Who carrying the church? Might as well just tell the truth, y'all. If, if Sister Murphy and Sister Simmons, every time the church goes on, they got their gift in their hands. My Lord. My Lord. They're paying their tithes and the offerings. Mm -hmm. See, we just throw away the offering. Mm -hmm. Tithes and offerings. But those two are the only ones. Whenever they had a pastor's anniversary, whatever sister go up to them and say, can y'all give me such and such for the pastor's anniversary? Or whoever. Oh, I, I can't do that. Huh? Time for time. Do we tire to just give a little potion? Give a little potion. Well, see, God didn't say that. Give us a little potion. God is jammed up. Did we say that? He won't think done. By what? By the book. He said 10%. 10%. But you know why a lot of people don't want to hear that? Because they're not doing it. Yeah, go ahead. Now, can that 10% be spreading across the board or just this one time? Where well, you a fed at? See, you don't eat at McDonald's and pay Burger King. So the 10% goes. 10% goes here. If you're a member of uh, Pine and Grove, this is where your 10% goes. Because this, this is where you eat at, right? So it's just like me and you going over to Albany right now. So we go down to Zaxby's. We eat at Zaxby's, but we're going to pay the own home. That ain't going to happen. God does everything what? Decent. And in order. So what we saying, if you look here, this is what this gold offering was for our sin and the cleanse where we've been. The cleanse where we've been. Time is moving on, y'all. Let us go on and read. Let us go on and let's get that other, that them other few verses in. You don't never have enough time. Yeah, go, go, go. 17 through 19. Verse 17. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he go in to make an atonement in the holy place until he comes out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle the blood upon it with his fingers seven times, seven. and cleanse it, and hallow it from the uncleanliness of the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. Y'all Amen. see that number seven again? Completeness. Final. Now I want to bring this home because of the fact that the time there. The priests, the Levites, they had to do this. Every year. Every time somebody. I mean just think about how many animals they had to keep. My Lord. <laughs> I mean. And God was specific. You got to bring this here. 
For your atonement. You had to bring it. You messed up. You had to do it. We don't have to do that today. The fulfillment of that was when Jesus went to Calvary. Amen. And I want y'all to notice one thing about this. I want you to see the pattern. Because like I said, we don't never have enough time to really do it justice. But just look at it like this. When Jesus went to Calvary, he took on everything upon himself. So therefore, so seven, seven ain't none of me no more. None of you. We are saved by what Jesus did and grace. We are saved by that. So if you notice, what did he say? He said, it is finished. That's what he said. Now, look at something else he said. When he rose from the dead. Yes, sir. You know how men folk don't want women to do nothing. Uh -huh. But the first one was at the tomb was a woman. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. First one at the tomb was a woman. Mm -hmm. But what, what, when she saw him, Rabboni, master, yeah. she went to embrace him. Say, no, no, no. For I have not yet ascended to my father. Uh -huh. Now, you know what he was doing? You know why? He could not be contaminated by her because he had not offered the blood. He was doing the what the high priest. What do we what is Jesus? He is now our high priest. Yes, that's he said, I haven't ascended to the Father. So when he did that, he put his blood on the mercy seat of heaven. So Sister Simon to the Sunday school class, when the America decided that they were going to Engage in the same sex marriage. God looked at the mercy seat. Don't let nobody tell you that God finna do this and God got to apologize. God ain't got to apologize for nothing. But you better be glad that He's looking at the mercy seat. Amen. Right on. Amen. Right on. Amen. Right on. And He's going to continue to look at that mercy seat because if He ever takes His eye off that mercy seat, God have mercy on us. Thank you, Super